Welcome back to the Hard Run Box News Corner. This week, I can't say there's been too much big groundbreaking news, but there are still a range of smaller topics that I'll walk you through, some of which are pretty interesting. So let's get into them. The first topic for this week concerns price drops for AMD's second gen Ryzen desktop processors. This is a story that did the rounds a few days ago, but probably exaggerated the situation in most instances. The basic news here is some places found AMD's main four Ryzen CPUs sitting well below their MSRP at retailers like Newegg and Amazon. The Ryzen 5 2600 was sitting at $165, down from $200. The Ryzen 5 2600X was $185, down from $200. $130, the Ryzen 7 2700, $220 down from $300, and the Ryzen 7 2700X was $290 down from $330. Now at face value, this seems like a price drop across the board. However, this isn't a situation where there has been an official price cut in the last few days. In fact, three of these CPUs have been at this price for months now. Looking at PC Part Picker, we can see the Ryzen 5 2600 has been around that $160 to $170 mark since last year, with a brief period at the end of last year dropping it down to $150. The 2600X has been dropping slowly, but it has been $185 for about three weeks now. Similar situation with the Ryzen 7 2600. 700X and its $290 price. Perhaps the biggest move was the Ryzen 7 2700 coming down to just $220, although it seems that deal was very short-lived as today it's back up at $240, which is $10 cheaper than the price it has been at since February. However, since February, there have actually been three times the CPU could be found for $230, so when you put that into perspective, this latest price drop just seems to be another flash sale similar to those past deals. And to be honest, as Steve said in his latest top five best CPUs video, if you're after an 8-core Ryzen CPU, the $160 Ryzen 7 1700 from the previous generation is a much better buy. It's $80 cheaper and only a little slower, which is hard to go past something when it's priced like that. So yeah, it would be nice if we could say that AMD has cut the prices on their Ryzen desktop CPUs in preparation for third-gen Ryzen later this year, but so far what we've actually been getting is just a nice gradual reduction in the price since the start of 2019, with a few flash sales thrown into the mix. Where we'll see official price cuts is much closer to third-gen Ryzen's release. Next up, we have news surrounding the ominously named Operation Shadowhammer, a supply chain attack that used the ASUS Live Update tool to install malicious software on ASUS PCs. For those that haven't used an ASUS PC before, their Live Update software is basically the utility that allows you to download driver and app updates for your system, similar to the utilities from other vendors. It's also preloaded on almost every ASUS PC. Operation Shadowhammer took place between June and November 2018, according to data from Kaspersky Lab. What happened is that the update server hosting downloads for the Live Update tool was compromised. The attackers uploaded a malicious version of the Live Update tool to the update servers, which was signed using a legitimate ASUS certificate. The use of this certificate made it hard to spot that the Live Update tool was loaded with a Trojan. From there, owners of ASUS PCs downloaded the backdoored Live Update tool, presumably to update an older version of this tool. Kaspersky noted that 57,000 users of their software downloaded this backdoored version, which could indicate a massive install base in the general population. Once the malicious tool was installed, it went about targeting a specific group of users identified by the MAC addresses of their network adapters. So not quite sure what's going on there, seems pretty spooky. ASUS was notified of the issue on January 31, 2019, so they've had some time to deal with it, but it isn't clear from Kaspersky's report if they've fixed the problem yet. The use of a compromised certificate is particularly worrying. You'd hope they'd invalidate that immediately and then go about checking and recertifying their software. Pretty big news in the security world and not good for ASUS. Moving into some gaming news now, Anthem has received an update that introduces DLSS support. Anthem was one of the games on NVIDIA's original list that was supposed to get DLSS, and well, now you can use it. As expected, NVIDIA are touting up to a 40% performance improvement with DLSS enabled, although for a quality loss like we've shown in our video coverage so far. 
Like with other DLSS games, you can only use DLSS at some resolution and GPU combinations. If you game at 4K, DLSS will be available on all RTX cards, but at 1440p you can only use DLSS with the 2080, 2070 and 2060, so no 2080 Ti support. At 1080p, DLSS is not available at all. We've had a few requests to look into DLSS in Anthem, but it's really not something I'm going to dive into. I feel I've covered most of the key aspects of DLSS in our videos on Battlefield 5 and Metro Exodus. Again, we still feel that resolution scaling is a more versatile and often better solution to gaining performance than DLSS, and it's available on all GPUs, not just NVIDIA's RTX cards at some resolutions. The other gaming story is that Hitman 2 has received an update introducing a DirectX 12 code path. It was a little unusual to see Hitman Hitman 2 launched with just DX11 support, given that the original Hitman also had DX12, but now both games do support DX12. We haven't tested the performance ourselves yet, but we've heard varying reports on the DX12 mode. Some people are saying in CPU limited scenarios, their performance is better using DX12. Other people have seen slight improvements with AMD cards, and others haven't seen many improvements at all. There's the possibility that, like with Hitman 1, DX12 performance will get better over time in Hitman 2. In other benchmarking news, Cinebench R20 is now available as a standalone downloader from the Maxon website. When the tool originally launched, it was exclusive to the Microsoft Store, but this caused concern among the benchmarking community is that you know, it could be updated anytime automatically, which could make it hard to maintain consistent numbers from the same version of the app. Also, using the Microsoft Store sucks, so in good news, it's now available to download as a portable version. Moving into Steve's least favorite section of News Corner, we have some monitor news concerning the ASUS ProArt P. Q22UC. As this is a pro art monitor, it isn't designed for gaming, which tends to be most of our monitor focus. However, this particular unit is interesting because it's one of the few OLED monitors on the market. This display was first shown off at CES 2018, so in typical ASUS fashion, it's taken over a year for this thing to hit the market. It's a 22-inch 4K OLED using a panel from JOLED, a joint venture between several companies, including Sony and Panasonic. 22 inches is a bit small for most modern displays, but at 4K, it does have a high high pixel density, and the design is portable with the ability to be folded up into a neat package. The key thing for content creators though is the color and HDR support. Because it's OLED, we have per pixel local dimming. Peak brightness isn't amazing at just 330 nits, but at least the local dimming capabilities are the best it can possibly be. On top of that, there's 99% DCI-P3 coverage, true 10-bit support, and factory calibration to a delta E of less than two. This monitor won't be for everyone though, because it comes at a massive price tag of 4,700 British pounds, which puts its US price tag in the $5,000 range. Now you can get a very good OLED TV for 5,000 bucks, so ASUS would be hoping this monitor is offering something that, say, a high-end 55-inch LG OLED does not. The portability and size could be that, but again, it's a pretty huge price to pay. Galax has introduced an M.2 SSD with a massive heat spreader on it that includes a heat pipe. Where does this heat pipe go? Well, just onto the surface of the heat spreader for some bizarre reason. And look at the size of this thing. An SSD really does not require this sort of cooling, yet, well, Galax has done it anyway. In terms of hardware, it's a fast drive with sequential speeds in the 2.5 to 3.5 gigabytes per second range and random performance of at least 400K IOPS, which I guess increases with each capacity jump. And they will be available in 512 gig, one terabyte and two terabyte capacities. Final topic for this week, Intel is reading a collection of new 9th gen desktop processors that will pack a new stepping. ASUS, Gigabyte, and ASRock have all made statements relating to motherboard BIOS updates for their 300 series boards that will introduce support for CPUs with new stepping. These chips are set to launch in the second quarter of 2019. Gigabyte in particular says the stepping will be labeled R0 as opposed to P0 for existing 9th gen CPUs and U0 for 8th gen. However, it's still unclear what the differences these new chips will actually provide, whether it's fixing errors or enabling new features. Intel isn't saying anything about this at this stage, we, which I guess shouldn't come as a surprise, so we'll just have to wait. That's it for this week's News Corner. Subscribe to get this segment in your inbox every week. Consider supporting us on Patreon. I'll catch you in the next one.